Welcome everybody to Dispute It. My name is Andrew and today we are going to be talking about the difference between a low-end AR-15 versus a high-end AR-15. We'll be talking about what goes into them and what doesn't go into them. Let's get into this. So before we actually go off and get into all of this, let's actually talk about just Pewit for just a second. Um, we will be starting giveaways starting next month, so October 2022. Um, we'll be giving away different parts and stuff for different things. So for instance, like this guy right here, it's the same style that I had in Afghanistan, a little bipod drop out for your ARs. Um, Another little forward grip. This one actually folds forward so it just kind of gets out of the way. Got some bipods. And we will also be giving away a Vortex Crossfire 2. It's the 3 to 9 by 40 second focal plane with some Vortex rings. The last thing that we will also be talking about is our video sponsor now. Uh, we are now sponsored by Discovery Optics. There will be a link below. They come with very, very high quality rings. These are the high rise 30 millimeter. Pretty nice. Um, I will say it's pretty cool that they actually have this little hole right there so you can actually still use your iron sights if need be so definitely go check them out the link will be in the description below all right so let's get into this real quick when we're talking about some low-end ars you have different varieties you have you know your palmetto states you got your uh, dpms you have your, oh gosh, uh, Anderson. Um, there, there's a lot of brands out there. Um, I know Bear Creek. Um, there's a lot of people that say those are actually really, really good uh, barrels for the uh, Chrome Molly barrels. But one that I'm gonna be talking about today is one that I actually built. This one is a Palmetto State. This one's actually kind of cool because it actually has government issued. It's pretty close to the same style that I actually had in Afghanistan. Um, has a little sight mark on here. This is the uh, Ultra Shot M Spec. I've had this one for probably three years now. Um, got the Feachi uh, little pop up and down irons. A little quick. And then of course your regular safety, regular mil spec trigger, nothing really fancy. And then you, of course you got your Magpul Ford grip. Now with this, it is a 223 wild barrel. It is a one and eight twist. Um, nothing really too fancy about it. I mean, it shoots really, really well. But again, the things that I hear about the chrome molly barrels, stuff like that, is that they actually have a tendency of wearing out really quickly, especially if you're running like the, uh, what is it, the M855 uh, 62 grain green tip rounds. Um, for some reason, it burns the barrel out a lot faster on those. Um, they do say that they are mil spec, but again, we all know if you were in the military, mil spec doesn't really mean crap. Um, <clears throat> now, another lower end but again you can turn this into more than just a low end is my dpms sportical so this one came very plain jane nothing to it um, i actually still have the original actual buttstock on here um so even still got the original charging handle nothing too crazy on there um trigger was really really well on here 
probably like a five pound pull trigger, honestly. But again, nothing too, too crazy. Um, I will say if you are a left-handed shooter, this will smack you in the face every single time. Uh, my dad is a left-handed shooter and it literally kept popping him in the face. Um, on this one though, I do have the uh, Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 2 by 24, I believe. Yeah. Um, very, very good. Uh, low power variable optic. Um, I actually have not done a review on this. I'll have to do that here soon. Um, pretty nice. Um, I did put, this is a 16 inch barrel, but I did put a 17 inch free float rail on here with a CAC muzzle brake. And that thing is super, super sweet. It makes it to where there is no rise. It actually pushes down really, really well. Um, the one thing I don't like about it is I cannot put, I cannot actually unthread this and put my suppressor on there. Um, the uh, handrail isn't, the interior diameter is actually too small to actually fit that in there. Sorry, I'm getting really close to y'all. Now, of course, whenever you're talking about the lower end, for instance, my Palmetto State, I built that thing for probably around $499, 500 bucks, maybe a little bit more. Um, and that's with everything on it. Like I didn't do a lot of crazy stuff um, and I got everything pretty much on sale. Um, if you wait till around Christmas time or you know your Memorial Day or Labor Days or anything like that, you can get these things dirt cheap. I think right now they actually currently have a sale going on where you can get the upper with bolt carrier group, everything with it on Palmetto State for I think $3.59 and then the lower you can get with everything on it uh, probably for $150. So I mean you're talking about $500 for everything. Um, now the DPS, DPMS Sportical um, without everything, whenever it was just plain Jane, I believe it was five ninety nine. Um, after I put everything on it, you know, different pistol grip, uh, optic, uh, free, free float rail, and the uh, um, muzzle brake, it probably brought it up to about eight hundred dollars for everything, maybe nine, somewhere around there. Um, but again, that's still not extremely crazy. Now, once you start getting into the really expensive ones, then you start talking about like this guy right here. You're talking about your Mark 12s, like the Mark 12 Mod Zero. This guy has your ambidextrous charging handle. It's got your uh, fail zero um, bolt carrier group. It does actually still have the Vortex Crossfire 2 on here, which is the same one that we will be giving away. Um, it does have an Anderson lower and Anderson upper versus the actual PRI version. Um, but it does actually have the PRI gas block with fixed iron sights. Um, it has the UTG, I believe they're called the, oh, it's the Recons, I believe. Super, super nice. Really easy to pop in and out. So, nothing too, too crazy there. Really, really like those. And then, of course, suppressor, but that obviously is something that I added on there. Now, this guy, this guy right here, total, total, total cost to do this guy or to go buy one, that one is a little bit different. So something like that could cost you up to, I think they're selling, you can get true PRI, full, full, full PRI, everything. I think they're selling for like, four to five thousand dollars um and that's without an optic on it no suppressor obviously um 
Now with that one, I actually did change that one out so it is not a true Mark 12 Mod Zero because again, it is the Anderson upper and lower, um, but everything else is PRI. But instead of running the good old 556, it runs the 224 Valkyrie in it. Um, reason why I did that is because again, ballistic coefficient for the uh, 224 Valkyrie is actually a 0.400, 400. And then I believe the ballistic coefficient for 55 grain is like a 0.210, something like that. Um, I believe it's under like the G1 scale or whatever. Um, but again, I wanted it because now that they've actually figured out everything with the 224 Valkyrie, it's a one in seven twist, 18 inch chrome barrel, or no, 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 stainless steel barrel uh, made by Ballistic Advantage, epic barrel. Um, I have a video of me shooting that out to distance a while back absolutely love it but again whenever it comes to you know your low-end versus high-end I mean the job's still gonna get done running your you know very very low-end very budget friendly and then you you know drop your more expensive one on the ground and it scratches it all up but again it is what it is. Good thing about rifles is they're meant to fall down. So, ugh. now, again, this one right here does every single thing that that Mark 12 can do, but it's just the Mark 12 does it better. <laughs> it's it feels better, it's smoother, it's just all around better. Once you actually start adding in a whole bunch of parts and money to it, it becomes better. Um, if the days of days were coming, I would definitely take my 224 Valkyrie with me. But um, other than that, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and remember, just view it. Thanks, guys.